Hi everyone, this is Perry from P2Design. In this video, I will show you the method I've used to create this idle animation in less than 20 minutes. Once we have created a strong pose, we will only manually animate the center of gravity of our character. Then we will use space switching to animate the other features of the body. Stay till the end of the video, I have a little surprise for you. The first thing we need to do is to build our base pose. You will generally create this kind of idle animation for your game animation. And as for any other kind of animation, it's super important to take in account the point of view. In this example, I like to go for a fighting game style point of view. So I will position my camera in front of the character, slightly beneath its shoulder line. If you are working on a MOBA, a platformer, etc., the point of view will be very different. What I advise you is to create a specific layout to check your animation from a point of views that you may have in your game. When I'm working on Noara, I have a specific layout that allows me to see my character through different angles available in the game. You can easily create a new layout by clicking the little plus icon and then customize your window setup. Once your point of view is set up, it's time to go ahead with the posing of your character. Create a strong and appealing pose is an art in itself and you should always try to find references using Pinterest, for example. I also advise you to have a big mirror in the room you are working or to take pictures of yourself to create your own references. As you act the pose, you will feel the different point of forces in your body. And that's super important to progress as an animator. I've made a whole chapter about the art of posing and exercises in my Blender animation course alive. Take the time to create a strong and appealing pose and make sure to check the following points. First, make sure that you have a clear silhouette. This one is decent, I've made it quite rapidly, but maybe I should do something with the spear so that it doesn't overlap with the head. The second point is to have a clear line of action. In this case, my character is leaning forward, ready to strike, with his weight on his rear foot. His whole body is pointing toward the attack. The secondary line of action all support the anticipation. And we clearly understand the threat of the spear. Your character needs to be balanced. Make sure his center of gravity or cog is in between the feet when you draw a straight line from the center of gravity to the ground. Finally, make sure that the secondary features of his body communicate his will, like the orientation of the eyes or the tension in the left hand ready to parry any attack. I should polish more the pose, but for this example, it's gonna be okay. Let's animate this. Creating our base animation is going to be super simple. I'm duplicating the current pose onto frame 30. Assuming that the up and down cycle of the character is going to be one second animating at 30 frames per second. From there, I will select the center of gravity of my character or torso root, go on frame 15 and lower his body. I will then check the animation and see if it's too slow or too fast. It's a bit too slow for my taste, so what I will do is that I will move those keys to frame 12 and make the cycle on 24 frames. I will set the frame 23 as being the end of the animation so that I can see the proper cycle in Blender. Now the result is more pleasing to me, so I will jump into the graph editor. I will press Ctrl Tab in the Action Editor to switch to the Graph Editor, select my Torso Root Controller, and I will hide all the curves but the Location Curve. I will zoom on my curve, select all the control points of the Z curve, and I will scale them. The idea is to bring a bit of contrast into our spacing. To make sure I can scale all the handles individually, I will switch to individual points. As I scale up those control points, 
the curve creates some kind of plateau on the down pose and the up pose, and so the character will hold a bit more those poses. So this is our base up and down motion. Now I need to repeat it twice because there will be the up and down, but also the back and forth motion. I will simply select the keys on frame 24 and duplicate them on frame 48. And then I will duplicate my keys on the up and down or Z location curve and offset them so that it repeats twice upon those 48 frames. Now I want a more bouncy cycle, so I will reduce the scale of the lower control point so that it doesn't hold the pose down and I will scale up the up pose controller point so that he hold the pose up a little longer. And now we have a more appealing rhythm in the up and down motion. For the back and forth motion, it's gonna be a bit of the same process, but this time I will directly edit my curve. So whenever the character is going down, I will pull him back. And when he's going down on the second cycle, I will push him forward. And I make sure that the first and last keys are aligned so that I have a seamless cycle. From there, what I will do is that I will select all my keys, duplicate them and offset them by 48 frames, the whole cycle. And I will play with the position of all my X location curve so that I can offset a bit this animation in time. From there, I can play my animation and move the curves from left to right and see how my character behaves until I get a satisfying result. In the end, I've created a two frame offset. Now I will go on frame 48 and add a new keyframe. I will press V to change the handle type to free and I will duplicate this key on frame zero so that I have the same key on frame zero and frame 48. Since I've set the handle to free, removing the surrounding keys won't change the curvature of our curve. Here there is a little problem as I have keyed frame 47, but I have fixed the issue off camera. From there, feel free to add a bit of motion on the Y axis. Now let's jump in the fun part, animating the rest of the body with space switching. If you want to learn character creation, rigging and animation and take your skill to a professional level, you will find extensive and top rated Blender courses on p2design.com. Hundreds of professionally edited videos shipped with all the models, rig and Blender files. Use the code P2Design and will now get 10% animation on any of the courses. We are going to animate all the remaining parts of the body using space switching. I will try to go through it pretty quickly, but if you want a more in-depth introduction to space switching, check out this video. The first thing we need is an empty, so I've switched to object mode. I will press Shift A and add an empty plane axe. And we need this empty to copy the motion of the chest controller. To do so, I will go to the constraint and use a copy transform constraint. I will source my character rig and source the chest bone. Now the empty follow the motion of the chest bone. To do so, I will press F3 and search for bake. I will choose bake action. I will use visual keying, only selected bones or object clear the constraint and overwrite current action. By default, Blender will set the start and end frame as the start and end frame of your current animation range. As I click OK, our empty will lose its constraint, but it will still be visually following the chest as it has created an animation that behaves in this manner. The principle of space switching is to then constrain the chest with the previously constrained empty. Make sure that you use bone constraint, not object constraint, and add a copy transform and source the empty. Now, nothing's happen visually because the chest is following the empty that was following the chest previously, but if I move the empty, we can see the chest moving. So now the trick is to select all the curves from the empty, press Shift E and add a cyclic modifier. 
Now, if I play the animation and slightly offset in time all the curves from the empty, I will see the chest starting to bounce. There is a little glitch because I've only 47 keys on my empty curves. I will simply duplicate the very first key and move it on frame 48 so that I have my whole cycle. And for the next baking, I will make sure that I bake from frame 0 to frame 48. With two frames of offset, I'm quite satisfied by the result, but it's a bit too strong. Now I can get back onto my bone and reduce the influence of the constraint. And now I have the same timing, but with a softer spacing. Let's now bring a bit of rotation into the chest. To do so, we are going to use aim space with a dumped track constraint. What I will do is that I will select my empty. I will display its axis through the viewport display option. And then I will switch my transform orientation from global to local. Now the idea is to duplicate this empty along its Z axis because it's the axis that point forward whenever we are looking at the character. Now I want this empty to follow the motion of the first empty. So I will add to it a child of constraint and source our original empty. If I now play the animation, the current empty will follow our original empty. I will now bake its action. I've added the baking option to my quick favorite. I will make sure that I bake 48 frames this time. As before, the constraint disappear, but the object is still moving as it has created an animation. I will now add a dumped track constraint to the first empty and I will target our new empty using the Z axis. If I now move the second empty, we can see our original empty tracking it and influencing the chest of our character. So as before, I will select all the curve of the second empty, press shift E and make them cyclic and I will offset them in time. Now the chest is both bouncing and also rotating a bit, but it's a bit too subtle. So I need to separate location and rotation on our chest to be able to tweak those values. I will get rid of the copy transform and instead add a copy location sourcing the first empty and a copy rotation sourcing also the first empty. But now I can play with both influences with different values. I can reduce the influence of the copy location to reduce the amplitude of the bouncing. And then if I want to increase the rotation, I can select the second empty, offset it in time if I want, or even scale its up and down motion or Z location curve to increase the rotation motion of the chest. Once we have a satisfying motion, we can select the chest bone and bake its action. Make sure you bake over 48 frames and make sure to choose overwrite current action so that the current motion is baked upon your idle animation. With those two mechanisms, we can cover all the parts of the body of our character. I will now show you another example with the shoulder where I will be only using copy location. So I will constrain both my empties to each shoulder controllers and bake the action. And then I will constrain each shoulder to an empty using a copy location constraint. I will repeat the process on the left shoulder and then I will make sure that I offset the animation of the empties and make it cyclic. Then, using the influence, I will make sure that the right shoulder has a little more bounce than the left shoulder because it's holding the spear that has some weight. And I will also slightly delay the left shoulder so that I have a bit of difference in the bounce of each shoulder. From there, I will show you a last example with the arms where I do exactly the same thing as we did with the chest. I'm first baking the two empties to the arms 
and then I will create a target for each of those empties. Those targets will be a child of the previous empties. I'm making them with a different shape so that it's easier to identify them. And once their motion is baked, I will use them as a target for a dumped track constraint on the two other empties. And those two other empties will add a copy rotation constraint onto the arm controller. You can use a copy transform constraint. If I now offset the animation of those round empties, it generates an overlapping motion of the arms of the character. Then, as we did before, I can play with the influence of the constraint, or I can scale the curves of the spherical empties, increasing the rotation of the arms. And I can use those techniques for the different parts of the character. I will use it on the hands, on the spear, on the head, on the hips. So you may find this a bit cumbersome or tedious, and you are right. But it's four times faster than doing it by hand at the very least. And my friend Finn is about to release his add-on, the Space Switch Toolkit, that will automate all the process. It has been in production for almost two years and we've been testing it in production. Trust me, this is going to be a must-have for any animator. With this method and the help of this add-on, I was able to do this animation in less than 30 minutes. A fantastic process to prototype your animation and a fantastic add-on to fix a lot of issues with complex mechanisms. Stay tuned as I will soon publish a full demo of the add-on for its release. In the meantime, I salute you and I will see you in the next video.